correlation between population and economy in control. What's the idea behind it? The household is the economic unit. If you marry, you make a new household. It must be economically viable. You need, you need to have a farm. Um, and we are careful and instrumental when we look for partners. We don't marry too quickly. Be careful, be waiting. Okay, that's a good partner. We can make a farm together. Okay. An instrumental view of partnership. It makes sense in a society where the standard of living is low. You have to be careful. There is no welfare state. There is no affluence. So you have to be careful. It makes sense. And we see this in the demographic pattern. Um, I like graphs. You will see some graphs. 1840 to 2000. But let's have a look at the first period here. Um, age of first marriage for men, for women, 29, 27, 28 even in the mid 19th century. So it's very high. It's careful. You wait until okay, the farm, this farm is now mine. And this partner can help. Carefulness. And many people don't marry. There is a relation between the economy and marriage. Um, we now cross. England, uh, 16th century, mid of the 19th century. We see here real wages, uh, this line here. When the real wages go up, uh, marriage rates go up, people marry, and the, the age of marriage goes down. It's the inverse age of marriage. You can study these graphs in detail when you see them from Sylvia Putnam. The idea is, if it's going well economically, people start to marry, and it marry a bit earlier. You can marry, if things are going well, you can marry earlier. If things are going badly, if the economy is not working well, you postpone marriage. There's a relationship between the economic trends and the marriage behavior. The Malthusian marriage pattern becomes stricter in economic hard times, and less strict in uh, good times. Even in the short term, uh, and prices, they shift from year to year. When prices, prices go, go up, people uh, stop to have children or have less children, postpone marriage, die, migrate. That's a direct reaction, even on the short term. Okay. So, Malthusian marriage pattern, connection to the economy. You have to be careful, and when it's economically possible, you marry. Um, back to our family systems, this is the Western way to do it. In other regions, with other family systems, it's more difficult, or a bit uh, different. Um, we have, we have seen marriage as a couple business, the economy is a couple economy. Of course, parents influence, of course, but it's a couple economy. You have to do it on your own as a couple. Not, not true, you inherit, etc. But you wait until you have your own economy. You marry it. But in family systems where, um, which are more extended, where, uh, for example, the, the parents are there and some married children in the household to have a family economy, you can marry earlier because the, it's a family economy. You don't have to establish a new household. You can marry earlier. You don't make a new economy, family economy. So you can, you can do it even much earlier when you're a teenager. Okay. Interestingly, let's make a connection to a uh, divorce. Um, in the West, in the Malthusian era, before the mid 19th century, the divorce, no, we don't do that. Why not? It's a very strong, risky event. You blew up the family economy. So you, you, there's a lot of uh, constraints there. You, you, you don't separate. Or you, you might do that, or you might just leave. And go to somewhere else. If there are cities around, okay, you can go to the city. But this, this is not something good to do. There's a lot of societal pressure, lots of problems. Um, but people did it, and domestic violence, adultery, etc., can be reasons, but it's sudden, very, very sudden. Um, let's take a, a look at pre industrial Japan. Stem family system, very, very low 
very low ages of marriage, they have very frequent divorces. You, as, a, as a spouse, you come in the household, it doesn't work well, you don't work hard enough, okay, you get out of it. Even after three years, very quickly, within two years after marriage, okay, was wrong choice, you take another one. It's a trial and error system. So, and this is pre-industrial Japan, it's not now, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, well, perhaps a very modern uh, behavior with divorces, but I think it's very illuminating the importance of these family systems. Both are instrumental marriages. It's the family economy or the couple economy which influences the thing. They are both they have an instrumental view on marriage, partner slash, and divorce, but it's very different. Okay. First period is the period of the instrumental patriarchal family. Let's have a look at the patriarchal side of the story. Um, maybe you're aware of uh, uh, Collins, it's, it's a theorist on, on gender, maybe not, it's not too important. What's the idea? Um, what's the human condition? Look at, you, look at yourself, look at ourselves. We're only adults when we're 25, and we have our degree, and we're more or less independent. It's always been like that, not with education, but we need help for a long time. Um, so you need some kind of family arrangement, one man, a woman, or something else, but you need something, you need a family. Of that. Second, we are aggressive, we can be aggressive, we dominate, or we try to dominate. Humans can do that. Third, women are vulnerable because they carry and feed children. If there is no milk in models, breastfeeding might be important. A woman might have to do that. Um, in the agricultural society, <coughs> the imbalance for women is at its peak. Why? Men go to say two kilometers further away to work on their fields or even further away. Somebody has to keep track of the children and this one who feeds them is going to do it. States are typically based on kin. Do you know uh, uh, tribes, chiefdoms, states, okay, chiefdoms, that's more or less um, a family-run state. The noble families, who is the head of the noble family, it's patriarch. So there is no state like, a modern state like we know today. So this is patriarchy in its full peak power, agricultural society. But um, in our region, our corner of the world, we can say well, maybe there are reasons to think we have a soft version of patriarchy. We know since um, well, since quite some time we have weak families. Even within European family systems, we have weak versions of that. In Italy, Spain have stronger families, uh, stronger intergenerational solidarity. People stay at home until they marry. Well, in England, in Scandinavian uh, areas, people went to do service before marriage. So, so it's a weak family system. We have a labor market which developed in the 15th century with some job opportunities. It's not like nowadays, of course. So, if you don't like your family, there are some alternatives. You can, you can go to the city to work. It's not an easy story, and typically you do that connected, still connected to your family, but it's a very different situation than there is only, only the family farm and you are dependent on the big leader of the family farm. The so the labor market gives you some power. And we have the church. Um, you have to be obedient, wives, you know, that's, that's the vision of the church. But um, they also say that the marriage is a union of souls of the partners. It's not a family coalition. It is a family coalition, it's always, even in the West. And even nowadays, I guess, it's sometimes still. 
but the, um, the stress here is on the couple. Even in the Catholic Church, wives have to be obedient, have to love their husbands, but it's a, marriage is a couple thing. It's not only a family. It's not a union of souls of the families, no, of the husband and wife. Okay. So, um, some scholars have said what we have here is in this early period, say 1500 to 1800, we have very modern system with not that much patriarchal characteristics, soft patriarchal characteristics. Um, if you look at the qualitative aspects of uh, the marriage pattern, new locality, you, you live in a house, not in a separate house, not in the house of the family, it's something new, of your own, the couple. Um, paternal authority, because of, for example, the labor market, it's not that strong if you compare it to, for example, the Chinese or Japanese system. Um, and if the marriage is based on a union of souls, it's typically also based on the consensus of the spouses to form a family. It's instrumental, it's not about love, but it's the couple, their decision. Okay. And we see that um, in the small age differences between the partners, the husbands are older than their wives, but in other regions of the world, more hard patriarchal regions, they are much older husbands than wives. So we have the instrumental, perhaps soft patriarchal family in the industrial Western. There <coughs> um, are always differences, even in health, there are differences in temperature. If there is a lot of property, the family is strong, of course. And marriages will be arranged. We're always right. Okay. The next episode. Good. Um, I made a lot of slides because when you only read the articles, and you then hear the lecture, you will say, hey, the correspondence. <laughs> so I uh, have a lot of slides so you don't have to write down anything you can uh, send them to uh, Sylvie. Um, you're with me. It's quite straightforward. Next episode, we come into a very different situation. It's the period of romantization. The, the misery starts. <laughs> Sorry, slip of the tongue. <laughs> Societal change, you, you know it. Uh, second half of the 19th century, um, standard of living rose. So what? Slowly, but it rose. You know the story. Uh, I won't go into detail. So, if we have the Malthusian marriage pattern in mind, um, okay, economically it goes somewhat better. It's not a, I still prefer to live today, not in the second half of the next century here. Um, the classic response should then be okay, we drop the age of marriage. A relaxation of the strict principle that you have to have a careful marriage pattern. Um, yes, yes, indeed. When we look at our ages at marriage, second half of the 19th century, this is uh, by way for the Netherlands, um, it starts to decrease for both men and women. So it goes to 26 for women, 28 for men. And these are averages, so this, these are real changes. It's the same for Belgium and so on. So. Um, okay, but romantization. It's not only, perhaps not only, a relaxation of the strict marriage principles. Some people have claimed we have a, a true cultural shift. We look at marriage in a different way, or we start to look at marriage in a different way. Um, some of the, the scholars, which are relevant here, there is an appetite for marriage. Marriage became urgent. You do it at earlier ages ages because it's the road to achieve happiness. You've had to be married to, to be someone. Especially this was the case for women. We you know sometime in the industrial period there was a separation of the private sphere and the public sphere. There was the retreat of women of the labor market. 
So we have the Sempitius doctrine, difficult to pronounce this concept, but we have the economy where we are male, aggressive perhaps. Uh, we want to perform, and then we have the safe haven of the home, where there is emotion, intimacy, is good atmosphere. If your kids are not at home, something. <laughs> Uh, the quality time of family, the, the, the family meal becomes important, where you can chat. Oh, how was it? <laughs> at the university today, what did the students? <laughs> oh, oh. How did the breastfeeding go to me? That's, that's the conversation we have. <laughs> Are we still? So, um, <coughs> this is an interesting quote, marrying early and building up an identity around expressive family-centered and maternal laws as a reaction remedy for public exclusion. It's a gender thing. Women, stay at home, look after their quality children, fewer children, quality children. They are responsible, they are the gamekeepers. Don't go to the pub and spend all your money to earn to the factory. But your friends come to the same people. Have a party. Take your newspaper, perhaps. <clears throat> okay, so that's something different. The misery started. Second half of the 19th century, we have houses with family portraits. Okay. We didn't have photography before, <laughs> but <laughs> still. <laughs> Anniversary festivities for the children. No, it's, 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 it's very contemporary as well. Then, then it started. Santa Claus. We all hate him. The mother, the loving mother. 